Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy, A.G. the Dad, and this is Shit Talking Sundays, where you can check us out at shittalkingsundays.com, but this is another episode of Fitness Tip of the Week with the one and only, the legend, Vince the Beast. What's up, A.G.? How you doing, Dad? Man, you know I'm always doing great, man. I'm always trying to take all your advice and... uh put it to work and uh I, I I'm starting to see some results man oh what okay you know uh when you when you when you follow a a true uh instructional pattern and and don't try to create the wheel it seems like it's it, it's working so if there's anybody out there that's not getting success and they want to not reinvent a wheel and they just want to go ahead and get the wheel Vince got the wheel Vince the Beast, he got the he got the wheel. So come on out and and check out our podcast. And he's slowly and surely giving us uh, a bunch of jewels. So, uh, what's the fitness tip of the week this this week, man? Absolutely, yeah. So, for those that haven't checked it out, like DG said, shittalkingsundays.com, man. Go up there, check out where we are, what we already done. This is our fourth one. So, uh, actually, is it fourth or fifth? Uh, fourth. This fifth. Is- it's our fifth. It's one. our fifth, but this is the fourth. This is the fourth one on the four legs I talked about. Right. We, right. we spoke on nutrition in one, mm-hmm. and then we spoke about exercise mm-hmm. last week. Uh, we spoke about the importance of getting your sleep, getting rested, and now we're going to come together on the final stage of that. And that is stress, stress. and uh, everybody that's alive right now could probably attest to stress especially over the last year all the different things going on in the world going on in our communities going on in our lives Mm -hmm. Uh, stress is a very high thing that is going on right now so we want to get on that stress and get that down so we can help you achieve that success you know what i mean Mm -hmm. right 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 yeah I, i i can understand that especially dealing with the loss of my father and having to deal with all the other things that come with that so yeah the stress level is definitely there because so i can definitely relate i know everybody has their own little reasons why they're stressing but hey you know just you know keep your head up absolutely keep it moving claim your success you know right without obstacles there could be no triumph you know what i'm saying right so i do have some statistics that i was i had to research i was checking out from last year um some of the statistics from with stresses from different organizations and uh, they're saying uh, like 77% 77% of people reported having uh, elevated stress last year. 77%. Yeah. So and then another 33% had extreme stress, you know, so they're like where they can't function or they're having, start having medical concerns, health issues, uh, strokes, heart attacks, right. high blood pressure, you know, all the things that, that stress can help elevate and, and cause problems with. Right, right. And then they said another 73% it affected their mental health. And we all know nowadays, you know, it's, it's one of those unspoken things, but it's starting to be more prominent in communities and in conversations mm-hmm. is mental stress, you know, mental awareness and, you know, people that suffer from that, and right. which a lot of people do. So these numbers are, you know, pretty high. And one, there's some ways that we can try to avoid it, of course, but we have to first understand that And then we have to, just like with anything in exercise and health, we have to recognize it and then we have to uh, address it. And we have to take steps to do something to get there, get that straightened out, get back in line, like you said, get the wheels turning. Right, right. That's why I said most people fail, I think, in all of this is because they they trying to reinvent thinking that their way is going to be the best way. And the problem, I think, with thinking that way is if it was, you wouldn't be at the weight you're at or the weight you're not at, you know? So in my case, I've always been skinny, so um, my way wasn't working. So I had to reach out to people. And to be honest, once I got with you, that's when uh, I was seeing the gains. Because there's a a process. I mean, you got to... See, I'm privy to some of the information you guys aren't privy to, so... Um, I'm seeing results on a different, you know, than you guys, because I've, I've, I've been talking to Vince the beast. So I, I can kind of understand what he's, what he's talking about, but you know, the stress part of it, I know that once I started being able to handle the stress better or manage the stress better, it was easier 
to achieve fitness goals because it didn't affect mentally the things I wanted to eat or didn't want to eat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I could see where the stress stress matters. But anyway, get back to what you were saying. Give us the jewels. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> as, as you said, you know, it, it's I mean, stress is stress is good and bad. There's good stressors. Obviously, when you're working out, you're stressing your muscles, you're stressing your your bone structure, you're stressing your your natural uh, your hormones and your cellular production system. You're stressing that, which is good because that's how your body's going to adapt and grow. But there's also the negative stresses, of course, and you know dealing with like we said uh, a lot of the things that are going on in the world. So we want to minimize those you know negative stressors, and one way to counter a negative stressor is to elevate to a with more of a positive stressors. Right. And, you know, exercise being one of those, you know, stressors that we put on our body. Now, now that. real quick, because I know that somebody out there is saying positive stressors. How can something be positive stressors? So g can you give us an example of a positive stressor? Just okay. just for the people. So obviously when you work out, you know, there's a lot of things that go on. But when you say specifically like weightlifting or even running sprinters, Mm -hmm. But we're going to stick to more like exercise, weightlifting, or calisthenics, doing pull-ups. What your body is doing, obviously, it's under stress. It's under tension. So how do you, how do you, how do you handle that? Because you know, your body, your muscles are tense. Your muscles are being pushed to their limit. Mm -hmm. Now that's good stress because the, you're, re you're releasing the natural defense mechanisms that you have in your body. You know, releasing your your uh, endorphins, mm -hmm. your happy your happy nodes, your happy hormones, right. and you're 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 sending the, the nutrients that you produced in, that you produce from your body, and also that you input into your body from the nutrition that you choices that you make, right. and that helps to rebuild the process. So again, like I said, your body wants to be efficient. I said that before. So because your body wants to be efficient, it wants to release some, relieve some of that stress. So how's it, one way to relieve that stress from that type of stress is to develop more muscle. And again, burn more fat because fat doesn't help move your levers. It's the muscle that helps your body move to move your levers or in this case, you know, your arms, your legs, whatever your body. Right. So it's going to cause your body to have to adapt and grow for whatever stress you're putting on it. So it's not as challenging so it's not as stressful to the body. Right. So that's what that's what that how a good stressor can be. So the moral to that story, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, if you're not getting, if you're not fatiguing yourself when you're working out, you're not gaining, or in some cases losing. So mm -hmm. you want to push yourself a, a little bit at least. I mean, obviously you don't want to hurt yourself, but you definitely want to push yourself a little bit mm. you said the exact word that i i use all the time and that's fatiguing mm -hmm. you know when people haven't worked out in a long time or when they are working out but they step themselves up to a different level or they change their program but mostly like you know beginners or people that again have been set back on the sidelines for a while and trying to come back in and you you don't hear it as much from your health professionals, you might hear it sometimes, you know, some of those hardcore extreme YouTubers that, mm -hmm. you know, that do all types of crazy stuff like, oh, yeah, no pain, no gain. You know, th that's the old na narrative, but that's not a good narrative to follow. You don't want to apply no pain, no gain in the sense of being hurt, sore. You know, like, oh, you know how people, oh, yeah, you know, if you don't, if you're not hurting afterwards, if you're not sore afterwards, then you didn't do it right. Or you didn't work out hard enough. Mm -hmm. So here's the problem with, and this is where that good stress becomes a negative stress to that point. So when you fatigue your body from stressing that out through, through exercise, your body again it sends the nutrients out to repair and grow your body to build more muscle so that you can reduce the stressors from the exercises. Mm -hmm. But if you overtrain and you overstress your body, now your body has to do a lot more work because now you don't broke down the muscles. Instead of fatiguing the muscles, you don't broke broke the the down to the cellular level. You broke it down too much. You overtrained, so now your body has to do, take longer and do more work in order to repair and build. So that's where it become a negative stress because you your your muscles are so sore, and that's where you can can enhance the chance of 
uh, injuries and or setbacks because now you're having to set back longer because your body is tight. So one thing I tell my clients, when you say when you go get on the toilet, and everyone does, uh, when you get up already on the couch, you know, when you get up, you should be able, you should be doing more like a, whoo, like thing, or, or you walk up, walk across the way, whoo, that was, I'm, my muscles, I felt that. Mm -hmm. Whereas opposed to an ouch, if you're ouching, when you get off the toilet, when you get off the toilet, after you're done shit talking to the porcelain, uh -huh. <laughs> then you start to, that's when you know that your body, you may have overtrained. Okay. Don't be wrong. It does happen sometimes, especially if you're a novice or if you're starting over. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be a thing that should be lasting weeks at a time. If you're doing that, then you're you're making it harder for your body to repair because it it's more work to do to get it repaired back to its normal function. Mm. Well, I know that leg day for me, I remember just I was at the gym and there's this one female that goes there and I know she does she works her legs a lot and uh, I called myself thinking that if she can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked her if I can work in and then she could train me and I wanted to do her routine. You know, mm -hmm. we, we chop it up every, we, well, not anymore, but back before COVID, I would right. talk to her and, and she would give me advice on lifting because I know she was there before me and she had, very strong legs. You could tell she, you know, she, I think she was more of a, a, a power lifter. And um, so I decided to take her workout. And she says to me, look, don't do what I do. This is just the first, first day. So just, we're going to go, you're going to go half my weight, mm -hmm. but you can do the same amount of reps as me if you'd like. And I said, okay, this should be easy. So I do everything she does. She's, she's throwing, you know, 45s on the on the squat bar, and she has me do 25s. And I'm thinking, this is kind of embarrassing, but hey, you know, I'm going to play her game. We, we do that. Then we do lunges. Then we do uh, some type of sitting leg press. And then we did leg extensions and leg curls. And she says, okay, we're done. I was like, ah, I can handle it. Because at that point, the man in me, wasn't feeling everything I was doing. Well, it was just funny that you had mentioned the when you sit on the toilet and you get up, it should be a whoo. No. Nah. So for me, the pain was so bad a day or two later that when I sat on the toilet, I couldn't even get up. And it was so bad that I even contemplated calling my girl and saying, babe, can you help me up off the toilet? And I'm telling you, that embarrassing feeling that I went and I and I went with really lightweight, at least in my mind, you know, this is really lightweight. And to, for it to tear me up like that, bro. So, yeah. So was would that be considered overworking? Even though it was light, it was lightweight. You know, it was only 50 pounds, 50, I was quite 50, well, plus the bar, 90 pounds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was embarrassing because I don't never do legs and don't skip leg day. It's very important. Please don't skip leg day. Especially as a man, because uh, Vince the Beast told me that, uh, you know, testicles, testosterone, if you don't want to lose either of those, leg day. And leg day is, is, is my favorite day. My worst. It's I, tomorrow for me. And I mean, don't mean I like it. But it's my favorite day, mm -hmm. especially when I'm going heavy because of the because of the high volume that I put out. But, yeah, it just case in point, it's not always about how much you lift. It's how you lift and how your routine is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get a kick ass workout with a pair of 10, 15 pound dumbbells. Right. And be sore and be tired. It's how you execute the program. It's like so however her regimen was, however she put it together. If it worked, oh, it, and no. and the timing that you do between your reps and the intensity of your exercise, which we keep talking about that intensity, uh, I, I could break a person down with some ten and fifteen pound dumbbells. Man, I remember that I was doing this uh, uh, cardio boot camp at the gym, and they didn't have a class that day. So um, the the lady at the desk says, "Here, go through one of these programs." So we did this, followed this video program, and it had down to the seconds, and I and I did it, and I remember the next day 
Another one of them, babe, I can't get off the toilet. I need your help. And we didn't use any weights, just your own body weight. It, you'll be amazed, especially as you get older, what muscles you really don't use. When you're a kid, you run a lot. Mm -hmm. at, at 45, go out there and sprint like you would. Like, just come out the door and just take off like you did like a little kid. And I guarantee you, it ain't going to be the same. Because I remember racing my son a few years ago. And when I got to the finish line, he was just about to beat me, and I gave it a little extra, and I almost fell because I, my mind was saying faster, and my legs were saying, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. And <laughs> so... That's all, all we got. Yeah, so I started leaning like I was supposed to be going faster, and my legs was like, why are you leaning? You better, you better lean back the other way because we're about to fall. You, you about to slide, slide in the home plate. <laughs> <laughs> Head first. So luckily, the, uh, the amount of run distance wasn't that bad, so I didn't fall. But yeah, you know, you'd be surprised. Well, you don't need, no, you don't need any weights. So, so yeah, you know, the good stress, bad stress. Uh, yeah, let's let's get back. We got off track for a second. No, but. We're, we're, I mean, but it goes into what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about stresses. I mean, you know, to that, to, just to piggyback on that little bit, when people name the top five exercises they hate, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm if you if people sit down and think about that, I'm gonna bet that at least half of them, at least two, about two, I would say three of them are going to be body weight. Pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Who likes Most people don't like pull-ups or chin-ups. Burpees. Body weight. Most people don't like burpees. Lunges. Push-ups. I'm sure about three of those are going to be in someone's top five. Mm -hmm. I know burpees and pull-ups are, because I hear it all the time. Nobody likes burpees. Nobody likes pull-ups. Hey, burpees is one of those, I can't get off the, the toilet, kind of uh, exercise. I'm telling you, do burpees. Really, go hard. You know what? I challenge everybody out there, if you want to know what A.G. the dad felt like not being able to get off the toilet, do burpees. Do a lot of bur Like, fatigue out on burpees. Like, you know, do do 20 minutes of burpees, like, with, with very little break in between. And I guarantee you, you going to have problems. Guaranteed. I, I, I give you guys, I give you guys some homework to the burpees. Don't do 20. I don't, want, I don't want nobody to go to the hospital. <laughs> do this, though. 10 minutes. I want you, in that 10 minutes, you're going to do 10 burpees every minute for 10 minutes. You have a timer. So you set it for 60 seconds, and you do 10 burpees within that 60 seconds. Whatever you have left over is your break time. So if you do 10 burpees and it takes you 40 seconds, you have 20-second rest before you get to your next set. That's 100 burpees in 10 minutes. Then come out and uh, send us an email. Yes. Send us an email at Shit Talking Sundays or Fitness Major at Gmail. Send us an email. Let us know how you did. Yep, 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 yep. Matter of fact, if you want to even do one step even better for us, send us a video of you walking <laughs> after. Because, uh, you know, I, I'm just curious. Because, you know, you uh, if you really, truly want to know how AG the dad felt, look, and it was really lightweight to me. I, and this is someone that was in the gym every day, pre-COVID, five days a week for, at that point, it was a good seven, eight months. So I felt like I'm in good shape when I asked her to, can you train me just one, just show me a, a workout routine one time? Man, needless to say, I don't ask to work out with her anymore, but I still say hello I haven't seen her after COVID, so it's been a while. But before COVID, I would say, "Hey, how you doing?" And but no, I don't know. And she she knows. She 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 laughs. I told her about the I cannot get off the toilet, and I had to ask my girl for help. <laughs> and we laugh about it all the time. But yeah, you know, I that was just to make it more funny. I know that when I was walking around, the only thing that helped the pain was me reaching back and grabbing my own butt and squeezing it because it hurt so bad. So it was kind of funny that I'm walking around. My girl goes, why do you keep grabbing your butt? And I'm like, because it feels good to squeeze it. Release. Oh, man. So 
So, hey, so my girl started squeezing my butt every time she walked past me, and it felt it felt kind of weird at but it at first, but it was but it was soothing because my butt hurt from the squats. But I told her you can't be doing that. It just you know, but <clears throat> it was anyway. Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> I've been there, done that myself. So oh I, man, I understand. Even again, there's always another level. So it doesn't matter your fitness level. There's always another level. Yeah, I've trained Marines, I've trained athletes, and I've kicked their ass. Mm-hmm. There's always another level. Shoot, it's just how you put it together. I remember one time at the base gym, there was this older lady. She had to be in her mid 60s maybe early early 70s and she did a um sit up class an abs class and i was like uh, cow fit yes i've taken her class okay. a long time ago okay. when i was driving you, trucks i took that same okay. class. my abs were so so no let me tell you <laughs> at that time i think i was in my 20s so i was like in my prime to yep. me so i looked at this old lady i said there's no way this old lady is going to outdo me no way this not, it's not possible so i got in there and i and for the most part i kind of kept up with her towards the end of the class it, it, it got really hard and she was still and talking normal not even breathing hard i mean she would do circles around me i, I and i realized that after the fact but the next day women i know what you feel like at least i'm gonna assume i know what you feel like when you have cramps because my stomach hurt so bad that I thought I had to shit all day. It just hurt so bad. So for me, um, yeah, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, if you want to know what women's cramps is like, do a do a 60-minute abs class with somebody who really knows how to do abs. And I guarantee you, you, you will experience cramps. It, <laughs> it was all bad for a couple of days. So ladies... I, I, I stay out your way when it's that time of the month. I call it Shark Week, and there's a reason why I call it Shark Week because sharks are crazy, and you know it's bloody. So I, you know, you know. Anyway, <laughs> TMI. Sorry, my bad. All right, so so l- let me hit you some or some other notes for the stress, and I'm, I save stress for the last for the last leg because it t- it all ties into the other three legs, it all collaborates. When I, that's why I was saying in the beginning, all, all of this is in unison. It all goes to the good or goes to the detriment of your, of your gains and your success. So 48% of people have reported having trouble sleeping because of stress. We talked about that last week, stress. 41% either fatigue or low injury, in low energy. Obviously, that's going to affect your performance in the gym. Another one, lack motivation, 38%. Oh, obviously, that's going to affect your ability to get to the gym mm-hmm. and your ability to eat, pick up that healthy choice instead of calling for a pizza or a burger. Uh, another 34% reported to be sad or depressed of people, which obviously ties into um, everything that we're talking about in this one. Real quick on the sad and depressed, let me tell you guys something uh, uh, depression and all that is a serious, serious thing. If you are sad or depressed, please reach out to somebody because there's somebody out there that will help and listen. And sometimes it's a stranger because, you know, um, losing a parent or losing a, 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 a sibling or losing a wife or husband, all those are very uh, depressing, stressful, and emotional things. And, um, you know, for me, when I, what got me in the gym is when I was, when, during a breakup, uh, when I, when me and my ex-wife parted ways, I needed to get back into shape. And, you know, if you're going to try to get back in the world, you have to do, you got to be right with you before you can do right for somebody else, or you're just going to corrupt somebody else. So I had to find me. So when I found me, I had to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get healthy. I wanted to get in shape. And it was a beautiful thing. And, and, and it definitely helps relieve stress because working out, he, when he was talking about the good stress, when I was working out, it would release those endorphins that made me happier. So trust and believe. It's, it doesn't make any sense, but if you are depressed, go to the gym. If you go to the gym, put some earphones on, zone out into your own world, start working out, 
you will see over time and, and, and don't think it's going to happen overnight, but be consistent. Just like we said about, um, create a habit. If you go in there and you zone out, you are going to find yourself and you are going to be more happier because you are releasing the endorphins that you need to help with depression. So just my, my little food for thought. And if I'm wrong with that statement, please correct me, but I think it helped me. So no, I mean, it, it does. It, it got, so what I said before, it releases those, those happy notes. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, and I think this is something that people, especially talking about women, mothers, but even uh, fathers too, but a lot of times mothers, it's self-care. The, working out can be is self-care for you. Right. And so you need to practice more of self-care. You know, you need to take that sad mind and say, hey, to your children, to your husband, to your to your wife, to whoever, to your friends, to your coworkers, whoever it is, your your uh, employees. I'm taking this time, this hour, this hour and a half out for me. This is my time. This is for me to take care of myself. Right. I find, my, you know, I, I, the gym for me is, you know, like my my sanctuary. It's it's my it's my zen. Mm-hmm. And so, but to like you said, if, if that would help with depression too. But if you do feel that you need help, yes, go seek a professional. Just like I'm a professional when it comes to fitness, go seek a professional. I mean, it's cool to talk to your friends or talk to family, but seek some professional help. Get some real guidance. Right. Don't just go off of what other people say. Talk to a professional. That's always the best route, from to my opinion, when you need something. Just like when you need your, you need a root canal, you're going to you're gonna go over there and you're going to call a dentist. You're, you're not, not going to call a your mechanic. Neighbor's house. Yeah, you're not going to call a mechanic to uh, go get, to give you a root canal. No, I mean, you can, but I, I wouldn't put any bank on that. Right. That'd be dangerous. <laughs> you know, uh, for me, um, I, first step, if you don't want to reach out and talk to somebody because for whatever reason, maybe you're embarrassed or you don't just want to tell anybody your business. For me, going to the gym and just releasing those endorphins to help change your mindset helps a lot. And if it clears your mind for you to be able to think clearer, maybe whatever it is that you're depressed or stressing off of isn't going to be as bad. So, you know, I, I wanted to touch on that subject just a little bit one, once he brought it up because there, we're losing too many people out there behind stress and depression especially. So please reach out to somebody. Even if, hey, look, if you reach out and hit AG the dad at shittalkingsundays.com because you're depressed, Man, I'll talk to you. I'll keep it confidential. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up. It's all good. Mm-hmm. You know, if I could save somebody's life, I'm all for that. All right. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, if you're still watching at this point, please don't forget to go to Fitness Major. Fitnessmajorgmail.com is the email or teamfitnessmajor.com for the website. And then also don't forget to like subscribe and don't forget to share absolutely shit, yep shit talking sundays uh ag the dad vince the beast uh anyway back to the jewels all right i got a, i got a couple more on that on these statistics so 26% record, reporting to have acid reflex or upset stomach mm-hmm. obviously it's hard to uh one work out with an upset stomach right. and it's also hard to digest your food when your stomach is upset so working out helps with that? Yeah, yeah that work, working out does help with that. Mm. Um, also, muscle tension, 23% recorded muscle tension, which is basically stress is just you and your body is intense for in one reason or another. Fight or flight is another way of how your body responds to stress. Just like, you know, if people, if, if, if people are telling you you're grinding your teeth at night, that could be that you're stressing out. Mm-hmm. My dentist told me that. And then uh, if your jaw is tired, um, from clenching all day, you're probably stressing. Just little signs, FYI. Yep. Our shoulders are always up and tight. Could be like, sh- you know, because your because your body is holding all the pressure there. Another way. Uh, but then lastly, the 21 percent reported having appetite changes. Again, your nutrition. And we know when we're stressed, another thing we want to do is we want that comfort food, and or we don't want to eat at all. Mm-hmm. So. So th- those numbers, you know, I mean, you can always, you know, research your n- research numbers. On, there's so many places to look up. But regardless of the numbers, those are just some statistics. 
but we're talking about you individually. If any of those relate to you, you know, one, I say, find a, you know, understanding it, recognizing it, find a solution after you identify it, you know, and, you know, whether, and then, you know, whether it's exercise, whether it's, you know, working out with weights, uh, there's yoga. I found out a new thing that's called waterboard yoga. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I don't do hot yoga because I don't like sweating. That's why I don't do saunas and steam rooms. I don't do any of that. I love I the sauna. I can't stand the sweat. I don't like the sweat at all. Um, so hot yoga, you will never see me in the hot yoga spot. I'm just, you're not. I have nothing against hot yoga. I, I, I appreciate all the hot yoga people that, uh, the instructors, but I would do yoga. I like yoga, I, but I might try to waterboard one mm-hmm. because, you know, one of the benefits with that obviously is there's a few of them. You know, it's yoga that I can do, you know, outdoors, mm-hmm. you know, if you're on the water, especially if you like the water, if you like to be around the beach or nature. And then there's also just from a exercise standpoint, yeah, you're having to balance, balance yeah. while you're trying to elongate your muscles. So that creates another stimulation. Keeps the, and they'll really focus on more of the smaller muscle groups when you're having to work on your balance. So mm-hmm. your reaction time, your reflexes, all those things will be really good. So, but things like that. Um, another thing that someone actually emailed me, and they were, they were saying, what about like aromatherapy, like lavender and things like that. You know, all those things, like you said, put on some music. <clears throat> you know, if you like some music to help you zone out, to, re- to get your mind off the stress, or you want to find some meditation music. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to listen. T- I like to listen to the ocean. Um, there's different things that you can find, but there's so many other avenues and so many outlets that you can that you can do to help release the stress. As you know, any little bit of stress release is, is more than is better than nothing. Right. Right. So. Right. 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 Man, I know that uh, I was watching this one um, travel channel thing, and these people were were doing that that balancing yoga, water yoga in the mm-hmm. pool. Um, I think if if you want to try that, try yoga first, so you have balance, because it's a whole different animal. I can imagine. I can't even I can't even surf. So right, but. I, I have snowboarded and I have skied and I'm I'm not gonna say I'm a professional but I'm definitely not a beginner. Okay. You know I mean if someone said you wanna go skiing mm, I'll go skiing and I probably can keep up with you kind of maybe not at first <laughs> I, I probably need to go down a couple times uh-huh. you know and fall but once I once I get it down then you know we're good but I'm not doing the big the top I'm not doing the the extremes I'll do. <sighs> Yeah, I'll do the normal hills, you know. I'm not I'm not trying to jump nothing. I mean, if I do, I, I'll probably break something. And, and I want to enjoy skiing. But, okay. But anyway. So we shouldn't look out for you in the Winter Olympics coming up? Mm, I mean, if the money's right, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I will go one time down on a snowboard and jump. Now, if I have to ace the landing, that's a whole different story. But if we're trying to see who can get down there faster... Man, for the right amount of money, I go on a snowboard one time because I know when I get to the bottom, <laughs> when I jump, I'm gonna need money to repair my, my, my body when I land. So, so you remember the commercial when they used to have a Winter Olympics? So you wouldn't be the thrill of victory; you'd be more the agony, agony of defeat, defeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or but just or just the agony. It'd be the agony, but I, you know, as long as I got paid, you know, to do it. Mm, I mean, maybe not at this age. When I was younger, maybe, but now, mm. I hear you. I'm with you. Cause I I wouldn't even know where to start. So, you might have put me on like the bobsled team. Yeah, <laughs> that I mean, might be where I would have to be in the middle. It just seems like you know when there's a four man bobsled, it's like, what is the point of the two in the middle? Cause they're not steering, they're not doing anything. I mean, uh, they just added weight, I guess, to help you get down, just go down faster. I don't right. Know. And when when they fall, it's like, oh well, I, it, it, they don't even get to see it coming. That's the messed up part. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> true that. <laughs> um, so besides stress, I mean, is is that it with the four legs? Th- that is the that is the four legs. I mean, obviously, there's branches, things you can branch off from that, but the foundation is what we want to teach. And again, that's why I call it like the four legs because, uh, a, you know, a three legged table or a two legged table isn't very isn't very sound on foundation. Mm-hmm. Four legs gives you a much stronger foundation to grow on and to build on gets more sturdy 
Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the base concept in regards to uh, getting your health back started on the right track or maintaining that healthy lifestyle. And like I said, there's so many other legs and branches you can add on to that. But if you want the starting, the basic pillars, the foundation, which is what I wanted to get people educated on, there, I sit right there. At least for me, that's that's my that's my opinion from my knowledge and from from my expertise and my own practices because I practice those as well. Right on, right on. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, everybody out there, you guys have the the basic four steps of the foundation that you need to actually get started. And you know what the beauty of that is now that you've listened to these four five podcasts of the fitness tip of the week i think we might be getting ready to get started on some activities Mm -hmm. as far as routines to give you some pointers to uh, address stuff hopefully we could start with the core oh yeah everybody wants to do something with their core i think the core is the first thing because without a good core i think all the rest is not going to be as happy well, yeah, I mean, uh, anything that you, everything that you do um, from just fitness-wise to performance-wise, whether you're an athlete, it all generates through the core. Mm-hmm. So having a weak core, um, it can definitely halter your execution, and it can also uh, cause injury, especially if you're uh, an ex- like an athlete or is doing something explosive. Mm-hmm. But even just from a general standpoint, you know, posture, and your ability to just be upright and to do normal functions. The core is the key. The core is the key. Man, so I'm going to be excited to uh, start hearing about some good routines, although, like I said, I'm privy to a little bit of uh, insight. (laughs) So uh, I've uh, already been working on some stuff, but I'm excited for you guys to hear of some routines that might help boost or change for you to be able to get some results. And uh, also, if, if if you're wanting to get results a little bit faster, man, reach out to Vince the Beast, that you know, fitness major, uh, on his social media, wherever. Um, if you go to shittalkingsundays.com, there's a link there for you to be able to reach out to him. And if you, if you want to hire him or, or uh, get some work done, and maybe pick his brain a little bit. I mean, he might he might reach back out to you, but you know he definitely can help you with putting together some type of program. Yeah, we'll always reach out to you. So be sure anytime you know you have a question, a comment about us, what we're talking about, or just a question, general question for me, you can always email at fitnessmajor.com, mm-hmm. I mean, fitnessmajor at gmail.com, or you can always, if you want to get a free consultation, go on teamfitnessmajor.com. Um, and do the contact us and we have somebody will reach out to you and can see we can answer your questions or and or get you started on the right path to claiming your success you know you know shoot like i said for me uh i was you know let me back it up it's so crazy every time i see you bro when i think back on how little you were <laughs> and to see you now it's like dang he got big he's like he literally ate himself one time because he's <laughs> damn near doubled in size. So that's my goal is not necessarily get as big as him, but I definitely want to put on about 20 more pounds. I'm about 150. I want to get to about 170 and uh, see what that looks like, especially when my whole life I was no more than about 125, 130 pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, for maybe up until about five years ago, I was that small so for me to get to 150 now is like wow okay i'm I'm telling you team fitness major you need to you need to holler at him that's why i i'm doing a podcast with him because i believe in what he's talking about so shit talking sundays we'd be talking shit about him if (laughs) if if it didn't work and uh his, his programs definitely work don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and don't forget to share because we want to get as many people out here healthy as we can because I want people to live long and uh, at very least think deeper about your exercise routines. You know, I always say our slogan is think deeper, you know. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, anything else you want to tell these beautiful people out here? Uh, no, well, yeah, actually, uh, get ready. I do basically not all the pillars, the legs that I just spoke about, but most of them. I did. I have. I'm putting together a, a short book. It's going to be on. It's going to be on ebook. So be on the lookout. I'll be. We'll be talking about it, and I'll be posting it as it comes out. I'm almost complete. So okay. It's been a couple of years in process. Ooh. Some obstacles, but it's coming, and it's going to start a series. I'm going to talk about a series of different short books. So, be okay. Look out for that. Yes, 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 indeed. So, uh, like I said, if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, anything, please reach out to us. You can hit me at ag the dad at shittalkingsundays.com, or you can hit Vince the Beast at teamfitnessmajor.com uh, email me at fitnessmajor at gmail on my socials is uh, Facebook is fitnessmajor team fitness major on the gram uh, TikTok fitnessmajor as well as uh, Snapchat fitnessmajor right on right on uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Fly Flyski what's up man had to rock your hat cause uh, you know he's got a comic book out there and uh when it hits, you guys are going to be uh, pretty excited. He's got, it, it's pretty tight, without a doubt. So, uh, you know, this has uh, been beautiful, Vince the Beast. Appreciate it. Um, like I say, I always, I'm always excited to do a, a fitness tip because I, I feel people getting healthy. Mm -hmm. And as long as, you know what, as long as I get one person healthy every time I do a podcast, it's working. It doesn't have to be millions. As long as I change one person's life, I'm doing the most highest work, man. One person plus one person equals two. Then double up that. And yep. you know, now you have an inspired nation. That's why I'm trying to make sure that everybody understands. It's very important to like, share, subscribe, you know, comment, all that. So, uh, man, once again, thank you for coming out. I look forward to uh, seeing you next week. And, uh, getting down and dirty and getting sweaty, man, because uh, it's time for us to learn some tips. Absolutely. So, all right, everybody, thank you for uh, checking out Shit Talking Sundays. Stay tuned for some more stuff up and coming. Peace. I'm A.G. the Dad.